Section 9.5, energy and chemical reactions. So remember, uh, my, there we go. My computer wasn't working. So remember after you watch this video, to go look at video problems 49 through 50, all right? So the energy, don't forget, energy is measured in joules, okay, or oftentimes kilojoules, but still just joules. Now, almost all reactions involve a change in energy, all right? So what we do is we compare the energy of the reactants to the energy of the products. And the difference is either the energy released or the energy absorbed. Now, if it's released, that means that the products have less energy than the reactants. If it's absorbed, that means that the reactants have less energy than the products. So what we do is we measure it in terms of delta H, where uh, H is your enthalpy. And enthalpy is basically your heat content. So how much heat you contain. So if your heat content goes up, that means you've absorbed energy. If your heat content goes down, that means you've released energy. Okay. There are two types of reactions. There are exothermic reactions. In an exothermic reaction, uh, heat is released. It will feel hot. The delta H of the reaction, so in other words, the enthalpy of the reaction is equal to negative if it's exothermic. And then in your textbook, heat is written as a product. So here's an energy diagram. Very important to be able to read an energy diagram. Here's an energy diagram. Uh, it shows that the, here's the energy of the reactants. Here's the energy of the product. So you can see there's a difference in energy. So what did we have to do? Well, let's, let's just make up a number here. This is 0. Let's say that this is 10 and this is uh, 3. All right, and that's measured in that's being measured in joules. So in order to go from 10 joules to 3 joules, what do we have to do? We have to give off energy. In this case, 7 joules of energy. All right? Now, if I take a look at my delta H reaction up here, my equation, delta H is products. Delta is almost always products minus reactants, so H of the products minus H of the reactants. So products is low, that's going to be a small number. Reactance is high, that's going to be a high number, and that's going to give us a negative delta H, okay, which again is exothermic. Remember that, very important to remember that. Okay. An endothermic reaction, we are going to absorb energy. In this case, the delta H is positive, and it's going to feel cold. So here's an energy diagram where we are absorbing energy. All right. So uh, in this case, if we start out low, we end up high. So if I take the products minus the reactants, right, we're going to have a big number minus a little number, which is going to give us a positive value. All right. Now, the energy released or absorbed, it can be used like a mole to mole factor. Let me use this equation as an example. So in this case, one mole of nitrogen will combine with three moles of hydrogen to give off two moles of ammonia. It will also release 92.2 kilojoules. So we can write three conversion factors here. It will release 92.2 kilojoules for every one mole of nitrogen that we use, or it will release 92.2 kilojoules for every three moles of hydrogen that we release, or it will give off 92.2 kilojoules for every two moles of ammonia. And this is where it's very important to let the units work for you and not to try to memorize how to do things. Okay, so the conversion factors, of course we can flip those conversion factors up. If I'm looking for energy, I'm probably gonna want energy on top. If I'm looking for the amount of product or reactant formed or used, then I'm gonna flip it over. 